Guten Tag, my dudes. How the bloody hell are you? I hope whatever you've been up to this week, it's been astonishing. <laughs> Welcome back to another Soul Singer Discovers. Today, today on Soul Singer Discovers, we're going to be rediscovering Deep Purple. But before we do, it's Metalhead Musings. Today's Metalhead Musings comes from Mark Smith. Ooh, hi Mark. Mark says, I like some stuff by Kim. He is a child in time. Insert big cheesy grin. Speaking of child in time, some of us elderly folks are due for a classic. What better way for you to experience Deep Purple with the original lineup as it should be? The live 1970 version is the best just like you. Insert another cheesy grin for brownie points. <laughs> That is a fabulous comment, Mark. Thank you. Yes, I realise that um, Metr Metrum? Metrum? I realise that metal has a huge spectrum. Bands, influences, ideas that span across a few generations. So I, I am very aware that I haven't done anything particularly old for a wee while. That is not to say it's just for old people, Mark. No, no. There's plenty of the youngins. The youngins. <laughs> oh, fuck. Have you heard all the new rapper music? I've heard it, and I like it. The young ones who've decided that they like older metal music, or metal-inspiring music, like Deep Purple weren't metal, but they are the grandfathers of stuff like that. They helped create some of it. So before we get there, before we get there also, da -da -da -da. I have new t-shirts, and they've got all of my things, my slogans from things I say, like metalhead music. And I hope you're having a salacious day. Hello, my dudes, stuff like that. Uh, if you would like one, go into the description, the bio thingy below, and there'll be a link. Click on that link, go and buy yourself a t-shirt. Treat yourself, you deserve it. Also, also in the description, also in the description is a link to my new Twitch, which you will want to sign up to because I will be doing a day streaming every week where I listen to very B-side metal music that you suggest. And we'll all listen to it together. Where the long arm of the YouTube law can't shut me down. <laughs> Anyway, the last time that we did Deep Purple, I fell in love with Glenn Hughes. Um, his voice was, whew, um, it, it, it blew me away. It was so good. This is obviously going to be the original lineup that we listened to, or at least I think it is. Who knows anymore, Jesus Christ. Some of these bands have so many singers. But it is Child in Time. Yes, Mark, it is Child in Time. So I'm watching the live 1970s version, Mark, and also the description says that the lineup is Richie Blackmore, Ian Gillian, Roger Glover, John Lord, and Ian Pace. I've got a rough idea of what to expect, you know, but let's just do it. This is Deep Purple, Child in Time. Boop. I am 
fabulous. So, David Coverdale, David Coverdale is vocalist. Yeah, he's got a fabulous voice. I just feel like I don't, I don't prescribe to the idea that modern vocalists are not as good as some of the original vocalists, the OG vocalists. I don't prescribe to that. I think, unfortunately, whether we want to admit it or not, guitarists, vocalists, bassists, drummers, young kids coming up now have such a wide library of things to draw on, such a massive amount of pedagogy for each instrument, it's probably more likely they're going to be better than all of us old bastards. But I do think that there's just a quality to a lot of older vocalists that is so impressive because it's easier for us to look at someone like David Coverdale. I hope I'm saying that right, please forgive me if I haven't. It's easy for us to look at him and go, well, what he's doing is amazing, but here's this modern vocalist that's got a bigger range and more technical ability. It's easier for us to do that. But the thing is, David was doing that at a time where those kind of vocals were still not new, not by a long shot, but they were certainly still experimental or at least not the norm. You know, I doubt that David had a huge access to rock and roll vocal tutors, do you know what I mean? I had a conversation with Melissa Cross about that. Like she was talking about the fact that when she was coming up, she wanted to be the best vocalist she could. But unfortunately there was no contemporary vocal tutors. So she had to go and find a classical one. And whether or not Davis had any tuition, I don't know, but there wouldn't have been anything like that even if he had wanted it. He's using like a lot of twang, but he also has a lovely deep part of his voice. And that sort of higher end, Wah! he's putting a lot of squall on it as well just a touch on it, one or two parts. He also has a really wide vibrato as well. I think that's very stylistic of vocalists back in the day. I think Dio is responsible for a lot of vocalists that do that, but certainly sort of late 60s, early 70s, that big ass vibrato. It was kind of the dawn of vibrato, that style, and it just got wider. You know, when you get to like the 80s, when you get to 80s hair metal, vibrato is like ridiculously wide. And I'm here for it, I support it. Yeah, really great. Let's keep going, let's keep going.
<laughs> that was good. I think for a, a band that were doing such a lilting song that sort of ambles along, uh, it was incredibly tight because there were several moments in there in particular when they went from the sort of big crescendo back into the ba ba ba, um, it stopped dead, dead. And that's the kind of stuff that only really comes with um, commitment to rehearsing. <laughs> I would say one of the things that a, a lot of musicians that I've come into contact with are guilty of is not understanding the importance of rehearsing as a band. Practicing your instrument is obviously important. We don't need to talk about that. But I think rehearsing as a band is something that you just can't do enough. And it's evident here that the payoff is the ability to create that level of dynamic shift within your song. Harmonically, melodically, there was a lot of classical music influences in there, despite the fact that a lot of rock music obviously has its roots in blues music and rhythm and blues. 
But I think that again is part of the wonderful experimental nature of rock from the 70s. And yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I thought David's voice was glorious. That big squally, Wah! he also does quite a big jump when he goes to that. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. It's cool. Those kind of notes can only really be achieved with mix a lot of the time when you want to get that like really beautiful squall on it and he seems to be able to do that with a lot of ease. Surprising because when I initially watched Deep Purple I thought Glenn Hughes, who was the bassist I believe, had a better vocal than this vocalist who I can't tell if it's David or Ian and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've probably read it. Oh, I've got it wrong again. God damn it. We can't break with tradition though, because I did that last time. If bands could just have one vocalist with one name, that would be fantastic. Apologies, apologies. Genuinely, it is hard to keep track sometimes, especially because this is not my genre. But comments the people coming in the comment section to have a go. Uh, may I suggest that you also call me fatty at the same time, get it all out of your system? Jesus fucking Christ. A really great band, a really great performance. What, what more is there to say? What do you think of this performance? What do you think about the idea that a lot of metal music or metal fans probably found their footing in guitar music and stuff like this? And then there's this huge difference between modern rock and metal and this kind of rock. What do you think about that? Are there any bands that you know of that are modern bands who are heavily influenced by Deep Purple? Because I'll be honest, I don't. Thank you as always to my patrons. Thank you to all of you out there for continuing to like, watch and subscribe. Until next time, my dudes. Mark, you can stop commenting about children time now. <laughs>